folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and you're in for a special treat because I'm going to be reviewing a brand new film that's based on a very popular web series. And if anybody has been familiar with the name Angry Video Game Nerd, then definitely give your mouse a cookie because it's one of the most funniest and hilarious popular web series of all time. Started out back in May of 2004, which was like past my birthday, yeah, hard to believe, um, by a website known as Cinemassacre, which is basically a film camera mixed in with a chainsaw, yeah, you saw the logo, that's created by a, a young filmmaker by the name of James Wolfe. Basically what he does is that he created his own web series known as, originally, the Angry Nintendo Nerd, which later on he changes his name to the Angry Video Game Nerd just to avoid some infringement with Nintendo. So in order to focus on many video games besides Nintendo. Well, he started out doing a web series on his website where he basically focused on really bad games as comes to many systems out there because he's been collecting them and playing these games for years. Yeah, and he thought this would be really cool to come up with a character that's so angry. Yeah, since he has a short temper and, and he curses up the storm. That he just wants to <laughs> trash all these video games to pieces. So that's what he does. Yeah, he, he wears a those thick glasses that are black on the outside there. Yeah, it's like nerdy-like. He wears a long white shirt that's buttoned, filled with uh, pins on his pockets. He yeah, wears those long black pants. Yeah, sort of like an office worker, like any other office worker that you often see. And he also has a bottle of Rolling Rock beer that he he takes with him anytime he he does a review and all, he all does all these ranting. He just comes across by having a a cold uh, bottle of, of Rolling Rock with him. Yeah, it's kind of like that too. Like if, like if you're really thirsty and you just you just want to like do it your own drinking game while playing these games or watching a movie that's so awful that you might as well create your own drinking game or so. Well, that's what he does. Well, anyway, um, I, I know he was extremely popular the same way that another popular web series that came out too called The Nostalgia Critic which is created by Doug Walker he basically does just like what the Angry Video Game Nerd does he just reviews movies but he does trash mostly bad movies that he does so it's really cool to see those two alike you because know? that's when they started doing their own battle with each other though back in 2008 yeah. but one of my favorite reviews that he did for the angry video game there was the Atari 5200 yeah one of the biggest uh, failures um, after you know the the video game crash that happened in 1983 you know due to their, their failing sales on on the ET the extraterrestrial video game adaptation of a popular 1982 Steven Spielberg blockbuster classic yeah the one that I really love as a kid would wind up making a video game this bad that it causes this to happen with the video game industry. Anyway, yeah, because we already knew about all that. Coming from all these rumors saying that that the E.T. video game has landed in, into a a burial ground in Alamogordo, New Mexico. Yeah. But after all this time, it's finally being rediscovered by, by diggers... Uh, you know, digging up the entire land burial ground and they actually did found some ET video games. I just saw an article on that most recently on on USA Today so that's <laughs> it's really interesting to hear about um, this so-called rumor that that's been spreading ever since it started. But anyway it was a very popular web series that I've used to watch a lot. I started watching some of his reviews. I, I've been watching them so far and and they're I, I gotta tell you this they couldn't be any more funnier than ever before one of the f 
funniest reviews that he did was when he did the one for the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde video. And that was like, yeah, he knew that this game was so bad that he just can't help but, but going back to his days when he actually did play it. So yeah, he knew it was horrible. And then there were other video games that he had done too as a review, such as doing you know, all these video game adaptations of popular movies such as Ghostbusters, Back to the Future, um, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and so on and so forth. Yeah, we get a lot of that these days. And of course he always deals with uh, the game developer, which is also a toy company called LJN. Yeah, the one with the rainbow logo. Yeah, which basically just does what they do best. They develop really bad horrible games including movie adaptations in fact they were also been best known for creating all the Thundercats action figures that that's really cool because at least they were good at all these action figures that they came up with it's just too bad they're not very good at making video games that's for sure well the Velen beat them actually but that's I guess you gotta <laughs> gotta see for yourself once you play these games but you know, I started playing the the NES system since I first got it back when I was very young. I started playing video games like Super Mario Brothers, Duck Hunt, Hogan's Alley, DuckTales, so on and so forth. Yeah, I, I used to play all these video games all the time, along with my brother Jason. And then later, my sister was born, and we and she finally got a chance to play some of these. Well, ever since then, she's been a huge fan of Super Mario Brothers and Sonic and all these other games. Yeah, we started getting the Super Genesis, the GameCube, Nintendo 64, Xbox, the Wii, the Wii U, Xbox 360, you know, so on. But I I know that I first discovered playing video games, you know, when we started going to these arcade places in, in Glendale, and yeah, we've been going there a lot too over the years. That Especially when you go to restaurants, you know, they always have those uh, those uh, table arcade games that they had. You know, remember when you get to play Pac-Man and all those other games that they have and all those other ones that they that they were coming up with. Yeah, I, I mostly used to play all these racing car games too. Because I, I know when we started getting all these other systems, I, I was mostly into uh, racing car games because I always played them all the time. You know, I started getting San Francisco Rush and, you know, Need for Speed and all this other stuff. Yeah, I was really into that stuff. Yeah. But, of course, we had Tetris and all this other problems. Yeah. But, you know, it's good to know that my dad actually owns an Atari 2600 system, you know, ever since he had it when he was very young, before, you know, we were born and everything. That I actually got to play that system when I was little. I had to play Pac-Man, Star Wars, yeah, Chopper Command from Activision and many others. Yeah. It does take you back to those days when you really love to spend more time playing video games but you have nothing else better to do because it's basically what it is. A hobby. Just like any other. But, you know, that's why I enjoy them a lot. But I'm also a movie buff because I always love to collect so many movies that I grew up with and the ones that I have in my collection with DVDs, Blu-rays, and VHS tapes ever, so on. So that's also part of my hobby too. Yeah. Of course nowadays I don't play video games that much. You know. I can see why because nowadays I feel like today's video games are not nearly as good as the video games of the past that I grew up with. So yeah, But that doesn't mean that you know, that I stop at this point, but it, because I always do love video games no matter what. Even I want to go back to those days when I used to play all these systems. Hell, I would have loved to go back to, to bringing back the NES system, as well as the Sega Genesis, the Super Nintendo, and all the others. Yes, we even got a Super Nintendo as well, you know, which apparently my family relatives actually has the Super Nintendo system. I wish I would have loved to play that again. Anyway, okay. Well, anyway, you know, he has been very popular. Um, I do disagree with some of his his reviews, mostly those movie reviews he did, like, let's say, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one that he did. I mean, even though I did used to play the video game, too, I loved that. 
I, I thought his well, it was very funny for his Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles free movie review. He does kind of get a little. <laughs> he does go a bit overboard when he went into it, and and the fact that he slashed the uh, the VHS tape in half using a, using a katana. I was like, wow. I didn't expect to see that to happen, but it did. Yeah. I didn't think it was that bad, to be honest. I saw it in theaters. I mean, but I understand. You know, I respect his opinion, and, and I respect others who have seen the third movie. But in my opinion, though, it's way better than TMNT, the 2007 CGI animated film, which was, in my opinion, was boring as hell. And I didn't care for it. Um... I'll, once again, I'll start reviewing that when I get a chance, but not now. I'm too many, I'm too busy with other things. But I already know that we have the Michael Bay produced film already that's already out in theaters. You know, I'm going up against Guardians of the Galaxy, which is already beating the shit out of it. Thank God, already at number one. Yeah, because I I hate those bastards that keep doing this. Yeah. You know because. It's just amazing how how a really bad film of a popular series that started it all would turn out to be what it, as we speak, a box office success. Unbelievable. Anyway, um, now let's get back to the film that I'm about to review right now. And it's, and it's simply, this is it. The Angry Video Game Nerd, the movie. Yep, it's an independent film that's basically almost two hours. It's... It's an overlong film, but it works pretty well. Sort of like all the other video game movies that came before this. I, mean, I didn't expect it to be this long, but I knew it was going to. It almost felt like it was like one of those uh, B movies that they, they put into it. Yes, it felt like a B science fiction movie that I've seen over the years. And it, it actually felt like it with all this other technology that they put into it. And I, I couldn't believe it myself that all this time he would actually come up with a film that actually is based on the infamous uh, E.T. video game burial. So yeah, so that's really cool. And it was definitely worth a treat because they just already had a premiere at the, um, the Gwemans Egyptian Theater in Hollywood on July 21st. Unfortunately, the tickets were sold out on their website. And in many theaters um, across the country in selected cities are actually playing it as well as a premiere but I didn't even want to go that far to seeing the movie for myself and they were also playing at the landmark region in, in Westwood so and I bet that's that's already been over already but the good thing was I'm glad they finally got a digital release um, since it just got released this week on September 2nd so now finally I get a chance to see the movie for myself as opposed to everybody and hopefully you know my family will get a chance to see it as well because once the DVD and Blu-ray comes I hope I get a chance to watch all the special features and everything that they put into it so I'll get a chance to do that but I'm gonna get right to the review right now because the movie stars James Welf as the angry video game nerd with Jeremy Serez who was in the TV show, The Bernie Mac Show, you know, I was very familiar with that character of his. He did a lot of stuff, too. Um, Sarah Gladenin, who had done some feeder shows and all this other stuff. Yeah, she was in an episode of Law and & Order and, and all these other ones that she's been doing. Yeah, I, I think she also did As the World Turns. Yeah. Tim Winters. Stefan Menzel. Helen Barrett, Eddie Pepitone, the stand-up comedian, he's been in some other stuff, even the movie Old School, School for Scoundrels, you name it. And Bobby Charles Reed, with special appearances by Doug Walker, aka the Nostalgia Critic, yeah, he's very good. Lloyd Kaufman, the co-owner and founder of Trauma Films, yeah, very popular. Saw him the second time after... <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy. So that was cool. Um, there was also the Black Nerd and of course the mastermind behind all of this 
The creator, Howard Scott Walshaw, makes a cameo appearance as well. Yep, who did E.T. the video game. It's co-written and directed by James Rolfe and Kevin Finn. So let's get right to this, this special review. The movie begins set at a local video game company known as Cockburn Industries Inc. Yeah, they like to come up with all these crazy jokes. A young red-headed executive by the name of Manny, who's played by Sarah Glendon, had decided to, to do some brief history on one of the worst video games of all time, a video game adaptation of a popular 1982 Steven Spielberg blockbuster classic, E.T. the Extraterrestrial. So, of course, they had to use the name E.T., you know, just to avoid the infringement of, of its film. For the Atari 2600, which causes the whole video game crash that happened in 1983, with the video game industry already going bankrupt, including Atari. Well, her job was that they wanted to plan on making a sequel to the most infamous, very bad adaptation by calling it E.T. 2. As a result of this, they wanted to bring in the massive popularity and the success of the angry video game nerd who was played by James Rolfe. They decided they were going to be selling the E.T. 2 games and so many video game stores across the country too. So all their fans, including the angry video game nerd fans, to be able to discover how bad this game really is. And since it's the dawn of time that that his loyal fan base wants the nerd himself to review the original E.T. game. Which, the only problem is though, you know, he didn't want to do it because of of all the bad times, all the the big hysteria and the and the fact that, you know, he couldn't handle this game so so much that, you know, that's why he's been getting so many horrible nightmares about that since he's been playing this game in on his childhood days when he had the Atari 2600 and, and he had this video game as a Christmas gift but before all that the nerd was already working with Cooper Foley who's played by Jeremy Surratt which they both work at Game Cops which is actually a GameStop type video game store you know, after you know taking a break from working on their latest video game review called Xenophobia. Anyway, over the years, since his loyal fan base had praised him to do the original review, he decided not to because of all the problems that he's been going through. After having one huge nightmare about the game, he decided to go on a special mission with his friend Cooper and, and of course, Mandy, who happens to be the sky's as simply a game nerd to, to team up with the Cockburn Mobile to drive all the way up to to Alamano Gordo, New Mexico to discover the infamous burial ground of, of tons of video game cartridges of E.T. the extraterrestrial games that may have been buried inside the landfield um, somewhere in that location. Unfortunately, the nerd didn't believe in anybody's um, questioning about this because the whole thing might be what it is, a hoax and a myth that all this might not be true. So, so of course, that's what leads to one of the biggest problems was when the folks over there at Aerial 51, that's led by a general by the name of Dark Onward, yeah, who basically has no legs and he has to ride on inside a, a machine, played by Stephen Mandel and along with his partner Sergeant McButter it's played by Helena Barrett after they discovered the, the secret mission that they thought that the trio themselves had went on to, this, to find some aliens as they mistakenly believe basically they're just discovering the video game cartridges that they were talking about and that's where it leads to really big trouble as they started chasing them around yeah, going through boxes and <laughs> and food carts and all this stuff. Yeah, all these cliches that they put into it. 
So then the only solution, uh, the trio themselves decided to go look for the original creator by the name of Howard Scott Walshaw um, somewhere in the area so that way they could find out the dark secrets behind the video game themselves. Of course they, they wound up stumbling across the home of Dr. Zandor who actually at the time was a worker at Area 51 so basically he reveals all the dark secrets behind the video game cartridges and so on and so forth yeah it, and a lot of things that's been going completely wrong as it turned out so it's up to the trio including the nerd himself to stop them but I'm not going to give away all the other stuff that they went into the production but I can tell you this as far as this movie is concerned since this was his very first independent film that he has done I mean he's been doing some other films too but this was definitely his first coming from the angry video game nerd I gotta admit I really enjoyed it I really did I mean sure it isn't a blockbuster movie like a lot of people wanted it to be it wasn't meant to be it sort of felt like more like a, a B movie feel like it sort of plays almost like one of those uh, B science fiction movies that we often get back in the 50s and 60s or so yeah there's so many of them somehow and the fact that they kind of got the idea of, of, of them all, they actually mixed them with all these miniatures and with CGI effects, with all this other technology that they put into it. Yeah, I mean, some of them were pretty cheesy. And yeah, and they were cheesy, especially all these background scenes that they managed to put into the film. Like all these locations that they threw in. I mean, basically the film itself was shot in California. In fact, they even shot it in the scene, you know, where they actually shot Star Trek and so many movies that follow. Yeah, um, the same location with that huge cliff that they had over there. Yeah, that I knew that was exactly the same place. And there were so many that they went into it that I think it was awesome. I got to give James some credit for this. I think he did a very good job filming this movie with the entire crew. And, and the fact that they also have cameos, too, including his... Uh, his best friend Mike Mattel, yeah, he, he had an appearance along with Cal Justin who's the guy who actually sang the, the theme song to his web series. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of good stuff that they went into it. But at the same time, the movie did have tons of flaws into it. It does seem to go really, really long as it turned out. It, it's a two hour movie. It, it almost went into it, but I think it, it really, you know, I think it drags way too long as as the story sets up, but I think it works okay because I guess they want to see more of what was going on into the film. But it was nice to see all the celebrity cameos that they throw in into it, and especially some of the guys that I'm <laughs> I'm more familiar with. So it's it's great, and I like the fact that you know that <laughs> they they really put a lot of uh, funny you know hilarious lines that they put into it, especially when when you know when the nerd actually had a a huge nightmare you know focusing on the ET game and there was even a scene where he says while he was laying on the landfill he says man even my dream is low budget <laughs> yeah well it is indeed a low budget film as it turned out because it only made uh, three hundred twenty-five thousand know, dollars for its budget alone, and they really put a lot of good effort to it. Um, I do admit, though, there are times when I thought Cooper, who's played by Jeremy Serez, you know, I thought his character, I mean, he was cool, but at times I thought he he can be really annoying. That sometimes I wish, you know, you know, I wish James had the. Um, Mike Mattel instead to be his his partner because then I think it would have worked so well but I guess it's okay to have a you know another character to play the role and, and that's similar to Ray. On the other hand though I thought the girl who played Mandy you know Sarah Glendin was hot and I, I mean it this way I thought she was hot and beautiful and she definitely worked so well for this role I just wish they really focus on her personality instead of 
you know, being disguised as basically a game nerd or so. But even though she is an executive, I guess, you know, she had to, you know, do her job well to, to, to work undercover, you know, prior to his success. So, <laughs> yeah, you get the idea. But all the while, it's definitely worth watching. I mean, it's, I mean, don't expect it to be what it was. I, I think it's definitely what he really wanted and what the fans wanted to see. I mean, I know the fan bases are pretty harsh at times. I mean, yeah, I don't trust them either. I'm not a big fan of those those so-called fan bases out there. You know, fanboys, fangirls who always talk about s something shitty these days. And they're always attacking people because of it. Um, I don't trust these guys. But on the other hand, though, I'm going to make it simple, though. I think this movie was a lot better than I thought. It's not as bad as, as all the bad movies I've been seeing. Definitely in, in that level. It's not as good as, let's say, wreck it Ralph or Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Or any other films that, that kind of got the idea. But you know what? It's better than nothing. That's for sure. And I think this is definitely the kind of movie I would actually watch no matter what. Even if I had to watch tons of new videos of his reviews all the time because no matter what I always will enjoy his work along with all the other internet guys like Doug Walker aka the Stutter Critic but you know what though I had to suffer through a lot of internet stars that are basically have no talent whatsoever such as Fred Finkelhorn and I couldn't stand that dick a mile away from all of his <laughs> horrible comedies that he's been coming up with. Yeah, especially the fact that I had to sit through all three of his movies, so that was terrible. And then I had to deal with all this other crap nowadays from other stars. But you know what? It's good to know that at least Sean C. Phillips is doing movies the same way that all the other stars are doing. Yeah, in fact, he's mostly doing horror films. I mean, he just recently did Jersey Shore Massacre. Yeah, I'm going to get a chance to see that one later. And all these other ones. So let's see how that turns out. But, as a result, I think the Angry Video Game Nerd movie is definitely a treat. If you ever get a chance, it's going to come out on DVD and Blu-ray pretty soon. It says by the end of the year as they announce. But um, if you do want to get a chance to see this movie, my suggestion is try to go to Bimeo and try to find the movie for yourself. And it only costs like $4.99 for rent. But if you want to get the movie, you have to pay $9.99 for it. So that means you can finally get yourself the entire digital release of the movie before it comes out on DVD and Blu-ray so you get to own it for yourself and be able to watch all the, the special features that they put into the film, so on and so forth, everything. That's a good suggestion. They also have the soundtrack available as well. Yeah, the soundtrack is, is created by Emmy-winning composer Ben McCreary, who's been best known for The Walking Dead and, and so many shows. Yeah, he composed all of that. He also made an appearance in the film as well, so it's really cool. So I'm glad he, he got a lot of work in his hands to create this with with James Rolfe and Kevin Finn. So they did a great job, you know, you know, wrote a great script. Everything went out quite fine. So anyway, um, I give the Angry Video Game Nerd movie a solid four stars. I'm Joseph A. Saboro, and I'll see you later. Bye.